Hello and welcome to the Successful Mentalist Podcast. My name is Ashley Green and as always I'm joined with my good friend and co-host Aidan O'Sullivan. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all marvellous. I love that because we're not recording these in video. I just feel like everyone needs to know what just happened there. You just did a full on intro uh, there, full energy with your arms wafting and everything as if it was like a full on YouTube video. Um, You've got to be in the moment with these things and you've got to. You got to feel things. You've got to be able to connect with people through other other means, and if that means swinging your arms around like a lunatic whilst recording audio, so be it. Well, there you go. I mean, I feel, I feel, I feel like that's a that's a good segue into this week's episode, if you like, being able to pick up on things from the other. I, I don't know. Realm. I tried realm. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I thought I was going to do that and then end up talking about Stranger Things, with the Netflix series. But anyway, anyway. Today we're talking about psychic performances. So last week we spoke about psychological performances, which is what a lot of mentalists are doing at the moment. And Aidan gave some beautiful insights into that, and it certainly gave me a lot to think about. But today we're talking about psychic performances, psychic characters, and that's something which I've been doing for for quite a while. And um, and it's it's where I see my future in mentalism. It's what I love doing. And um, yeah, yeah. So uh, today you're going to hear about that. Yeah, so I mean, it's a, a really interesting thing, and again, I think that's one of the reasons that I'm so excited for our tour, because being mm. able to to see the two polar opposites working, not just together but independently on the same stage in the same evening, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. So, um, picking up on the same thoughts but using different means, to it's going to be so interesting. Oh, beautiful. I don't, I don't want to talk too much about that because. I'd rather that everyone was able to experience it and, and see what we've put together um, because we've had time given the global pandemic that we've just had having continue yeah. to having. I don't know what the state is going to be when this episode drops. So um, let's ignore world politics and all of the, the global situation. And instead, let's talk about you, Ashley. So uh, cool. ev- what do you want to know? Well, everything. <laughs> Teach us everything. Everything. Um, no, I think what would be interesting to just recap sort of how your psychic-esque character sort of came about i mean obviously people have listened earlier on but how did that kind of what 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 jumped you into that sort of area yeah so when i was performing uh getting into mentalism and magic and all of that when i when i was younger i was always interested in uh in the the you know what was it the alpha initiative the total project that uh, james randy and banachek took part in I was fascinated with Yuri Geller. I'd watch countless psychics and monks doing crazy things, setting fire to stuff with their hands, learn about witches over in Africa. I I was fascinated with all of that. Um, It didn't really change my performances. It was just something that I used to love watching all these videos and look at like all this crazy stuff. And I think maybe that's what planted the seed in my head and then it grew over the years and that's what led me to where I am now. And the defining moment of why I, I jumped over into into doing the psychic performance, it was the the need to be different. And it was the need to stand out from the other performers based on the environment I perform in. I perform in a in a magic bar full of various other magicians all, all doing uh, similar sort of things, magic tricks. And I was like, I need to find a way of really being different and really doing something which no one's doing and no one's going to do. Um, and that, I guess, because the seed was planted years ago, and I had this fascination into it, I naturally just fell into the into the psychic world. Um, I started doing predictions, and it all just kind of came together in one one big mush. And here I am today. I mean, yeah, that's it's a really sort of interesting thing. Okay, <laughs> almost like in the same way that psychology weaved its way into into my act the the whole psychic stuff weaved it weaved into yours like is there a specific well, thing yeah. oh go on yeah i mean firstly um it's bringing other influences into your performances whether you're a magician a mentalist any performer it, it's bringing the things you enjoy in because if you're not doing the things you enjoy first of all you're going to get bored but if you're if you're genuinely doing and 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 bringing in other influences that that helps make your act unique so it gives you a little bit more variety and 
and nice little things for your audience to pick up on. So I think we spoke about that in one of the one of the previous episodes, and uh, we came to like SpongeBob mentalism and oh, weird stuff God, like yeah, let's that. Let's not go that far. Um, but in, def- in terms of defining moment, not it's not really like I didn't wake up one morning and I had an epiphany and I I was like meditating off the floor and I was in the gates of heaven talking to Jesus and he gave me this innate powers to talk to people and uh, it, it didn't happen like that. It was like a slow transition in um, and it just, just happened over time of me being interested in this stuff and it was just kind of trial and error and um, it worked and people liked it from an entertainment point of view where a psychic will typically do do readings or predictions about the future um, but I was kind of taking it in a in a style of more of an entertaining style more of like an entertaining like mixing it with the magic tricks kind of thing yeah um, and yeah people really liked it so it stuck I mean uh, yeah it's so interesting are you able to elaborate a little more in terms of the the crossover from the psychic uh, world into your performance so how do, how it's one thing to be able to say that yes you use um a psychic uh, presentations but what What does that mean for the people that aren't familiar with that already? Okay. So it means that when I read people's minds, I use heavily my intuition. And it, like, when I first started, I was just kind of playing it off. But now, and and especially in the last few months, when I, when I think about my whole kind of performance, I'm, I'm mixing it in with, with, I guess kind of readings as well, but not readings like I've seen online where people say, what are the best Barnum statements to use in my reading so I can throw them out before? No, I, I just, I say what I feel in the moment. Like I get a feeling and I, I know this is going to like, people are going to be there like, what is this? I just want some logic to understand how to perform as a psycho. But this is, this is what I do. And if you find that weird, then go with it. But like, I, I look at someone and you know when you look at someone you get a feeling about them uh, I, I think we all do it's an ability we all we all have and um i i say what i i feel in the moment so it, it consists heavily of i guess readings but the the if i try and simplify it so people can understand the process of me reading a mind instead of saying it's a magic trick instead of doing what you do and relying on psychology i'm use i'm 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 saying it's my intuition and i'm 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 picking up on things but my my character is a weird one because i'm not saying oh yeah my intuition allows me to uh to to see visions my character is very different and it's i don't know how i'm reading minds it just happens like my intuition will just give me like a something to hook onto whether that be like a, a word flash up in my mind a, a vision that's that's my 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 character when I perform um so I, I stick to that and that keeps me on the on the psychic performance did that I, I feel like I've again like I tend to go off on tangents like no, not at all you should call me all. tangent man on this podcast but does that answer that question yeah no it definitely does is I, th- I, I think just on it's really important because again last last episode I was able to say that I use psychology and here's a couple of examples so but to be able to just say I have a psychic performance like not not everybody has the experience with a psychic or they not everybody sees the psychic industry in the same way so it's good to just have a little bit more background in terms of sort of your takeaways from that industry and and how you weave that in uh, and I know we've probably mentioned this on the podcast but I'm just going to point it out again uh, I hate your line on uh, I don't know how I read minds um because it's the most frustrating thing because it's literally a get out of jail free card for everything it's so good and so clever um i hate you for coming up with it in the first place it's beautiful but, um, and it it makes me it makes my character interesting like when i when i talk to people about it like and it and and it does open me up to read minds how i want and it makes it interesting for the audience like i can go up to them and i can say i'm really getting a sensation of smell here but and then i can go off i literally describe like if I'm reading someone's mind, I focus on like one of the five senses, like on a route. I, I mean, I don't do it on everything because it's weird to just go, oh, smell. Now I'm seeing, now I'm seeing a vision, and now I'm hearing. Like you know, you just do it few between like what you were saying last episode instead of being like psychological heavy, like constantly. Just scatter it around a bit, 
Um, but yeah, I, I do that and I just feel it makes it interesting. Yeah, I mean, you, it, you kind of come, alluded to an interesting point there and I kind of want to pick your brains on it. So with the psychological premise, obviously I want people to come away thinking that I must be good at reading people um, to be able to, to achieve the things that I'm achieving when I'm performing. What do you want people taking away from your performance? Do, like, and if you, like, what's your sort of credibility level? Do, do do you feel that being a psychic is more credible, or do you find that the like, what's yeah. your credibility stuff? Just so I don't care. First of all, I don't care what someone calls me. I don't care whether someone says, "Oh, you're reading someone psychologically." I don't care whether someone calls me a magician, a trickster. Um, I don't care whether someone calls me a psychic. Like, of course, I say I I use the term magician on on my website and various places because it it gets picked up a little bit better on the search engines people search for wedding magician no one searches for wedding mind reader or wedding mentalist or wedding psychic it's wedding magician so i don't care what people call me but what i want people to go away thinking and what they do go away thinking 99 percent of the time is i'm real and i genuinely am a psychic and i, I know that seems weird and i know that a lot of people would say, oh, it's unethical to, to make people go away. Well, I'm not doing it in an unethical way. I'm not I'm not manipulating with people's thoughts. And I'm it, it's really hard for me to describe this because there's no clear cut with the with the psychic stuff because it's all just like hippy dippy, read your mind, and I do it through just weird intuition. But I, maybe if I dial it back a bit. What I want my audience to go away thinking is that I can genuinely read a mind. I'm not doing magic tricks. It's just uh, an ability I've got. Simple as that. That's what I want them to go away. What they do go away thinking is 99% of the time is that. Even though I work in a magic bar, even though they come in expecting magic, even though they look at me and believe I'm the magician, through my performances, I convert 99% of people to go and oh my god, he's got some weird ability. I had a group of um, sceptics come in and I, I didn't do a trick on them. I gave them predictions about their future, came back, fully converted. They was like, you've literally just predicted our future and stuff that would happen. It wasn't tricks, but that was just stuff I do. And and it's a, it's a nice little spin for the audience. It, and it's really different from seeing a usual magician doing card tricks, you know? It's that variety which I wanted and I craved when I was performing there. Is it something different? I mean, I've seen, I've seen the reviews, I've seen the the, the comments, I, I've heard the stories about your your performances and your gigs as this psychic character. Would you say, have you got any advice for people looking into this sort of realm of things? I've got another question that I want to ask in a second on the topic of yeah. credibility, but so advice, like, first of all, you need to understand why you're doing it. Like, if you and I know there's people listening to this podcast which are interested in in the whole psychic area. I mean, what are you interested in? Do you like palm reading? Do you like tarot reading? Uh, do you like uh, pendulums, divination tools? Are, are you interested in uh, in all of that? I mean, maybe it helps to break it down into, into what abilities you can have, what superpowers, telekinesis, telepathy. Um, can you talk to the dead? Um, which is a whole thing which we can spend hours talking about ethics on that area. Um, but it's what what can you do? Find out what you like and 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 go from there. I mean, if if you want to do it, just maybe look at how psychics perform. And the best piece of advice I can give as well is what I've personally done. Like I um, am part of like a little uh, mediumship circle. And um, it's a group of psychics. We meet every so often, currently online, and um, and and it, it's not about magic. It's not about tricks. It, it's about genuine intuition in that moment. So, the ability to learn how uh, professional psychics operate, how they how they do their thing, like and and talking about this now, it, it's really important to just put the tricks to the back of your mind and. And just be very open-minded with this, I, I want to say, because like, there's people going to be like, well, this is the weirdest podcast they've put out. <laughs> well, no, it goes, but, just, it's so important to just stay open-minded with everything. Like, 
a few months yeah. a few months ago here's me telling you all about uh, the benefits and 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 the like the importance of of daily meditation and meditation practices what, oh yeah like you can talk now from experience like yeah i i, I put that into every day um twice a day morning and afternoon i do a vision lakiani six phase meditation in the morning crazy right before i go to bed unwind another meditation uh mid meditation i had a vision come to me that i was uh doing my youtube wrong and now i uh i i've, I've got an action plan which is like a better way of of doing my YouTube, and I think without actually putting my mind aside, and and just kind of taking a break from the the daily stress and constant thoughts, I wouldn't have been able to just let my brain just relax and come up with that. So yeah, yeah and I definitely, that, definitely that think sort the of same, stuff is great. It same applies heavily to to wait, like going back to your story about the um, the mediumship circle that you're that you're part of. Like for the listeners, don't shun that option because it sounds weird or it sounds like Ashley's just joined a cult or, or anything like that. There is more to it. There, you've mm. got to stay open-minded, especially in this sort of presentation. If yeah, you. I mean, if you if you don't believe in, in, in psychics and that, actually spending the time with a psychic, understanding how they do a reading, is very eye-opening. Like, honestly, I remember my readings were very full of logic full of um and for anyone who doesn't know it's like i mean just if you don't know research a reading you'll you'll be able to find more answers on it than than i can give in a in a few minutes so if you don't know what a reading is after the podcast just go wait search it and then you'll find out what we're on about but the i i was always thinking of readings like i need to use stock lines i need to use barnum statements i i have to have a certain order of stuff and that's how i'd 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 do my readings and then I'd say whatever come to mind. Now my whole process, and literally, this is fresh, and this is what this podcast is all about, sharing new experiences. This piece of advice, and I, I've learned this in the last month, th month to three weeks. For me, readings now are about putting that aside, putting the logic aside, giving your mind time to breathe, and just saying what comes to mind. And I... Uh, I was doing a reading on, on a lady in the group and how's this for a magic trick with no tricks? I told her, I mean, think of all the methods we'd have to find out information about someone's father um, and specific details. I, I told a lady in, in the group, um, her father had passed away at around about the age of 75, 80. I was a few years out, but she said he always looked younger, so still got that hit. Um, I, I described his character perfectly, exactly how he looked, his mannerisms, exactly how she treated him, um, exactly what he'd done after work, um, during work, all of that, and um, and the fact he liked dressing up, and I brought the attention to the hat that he'd always put on. I mean, think of the amount of methods and money we'd invest learning stuff like that, but through learning a different skill set and through spending time with psychics in the community who, who do this stuff, you know, professionally, I'm now able to do that with no tricks. So if you want to, like my one piece of advice, if you really want to get better at readings and if you want to get better at doing performances with like a little psychic flair, if you want to be full on psychics, if you want to have that little psychic vibe, if you want to be a palm reader, find the people who are who you're interested in. You want to do palm reading? Find a professional palm reader and quiz the hell out of them and find out how they do it. Then incorporate that into your performances and then bring the magic back in to make it that full on entertainment stuff and and you'll be you'll be mental, you know? Well, yeah, and so it's important. it's been so eye opening for me. It's so interesting to hear like your experiences and the, and the stories that you're getting week by week as a result of these these sort of studies if you like these new studies you're investing your most important asset which is your time into the heart of what it is that your your business boils down to like your cycle uh, psychic performing that that's your flair but kind of jumping back to because you mentioned about obviously looking and spending the time in the in the psychic worlds and, and embedding those kind of interests and then combining that with the magic to create the full round experience we did mention this in the last episode i kind of want to go into it a little bit now um, do you use a disclaimer? 
No. Why? Not good enough. <laughs> who who is it that said who said that? Do you think you're good enough for a disclaimer? Who is that magician? I can't remember who it was. But um, I I I don't use a disclaimer because I'm not saying anything which is going to upset my audience. I and and this is something which again. Magicians have a very negative view on psychics. As soon as I joined this, this this psychic circle, they are so ethical. The ones that the group I'm in, very ethical. They they say that we we need to stay on the positive side of things. You don't want to take advantage of people. You don't want to ma manipulate their emotions, which there are people out there doing in the psychic community. I mean, look at faith healers. Dirty. as discussed in that, that whole world. And um, and it is important just to stay ethical. And if you stay ethical, and if your intent is to entertain and support and enlighten people, then you don't need a disclaimer because you're not doing anything bad. I mean, I do say when I perform, I'm not a medium. I will not speak to the dead. Like it, I, I I've had, I had a very negative um, experience. I asked a lady to think of something, and I told her exactly what she was thinking of. She thought of the name of her uh, her mother who'd sadly passed away and she assumed I was a medium I I kept saying I am not a medium but she would not be persuaded otherwise maybe the the drink and that but um but I the reason why I say I'm not a medium is because I, I don't want to get into that whole realm of things like what I enjoy is entertaining people and it with any entertainment you're you're taking someone away from the stress and negativity in their life and you're you're distracting them and you're you're taking them through like a journey for like a few minutes and if you can put a smile on someone's face then that's beautiful isn't it so i i want to stay away from that i mean i still talk about really weird things when i perform but i kind of i i leave the line at um at mediumship when i when i perform as a, as an entertainer um and that's why I think that's uh, that's important. No, I really I find that interesting. Um, so it, just to put you in sort of like a, a a fictional scenario here, you're performing a close up set, and uh, to start with the set, you do um, uh, you start with some form of intuitive piece, whatever that is. The trick's redundant. And you're doing something, but based off of your intuition, and you've just whether that's readings or something, and then to close out the set you end up doing um something that is a magic trick with psychic enhanced perform uh, like presentation so you you essentially you're doing psychic followed by a bulk of magic tricks if they asked you immediately afterwards was that a magic trick what what, what would your reaction be to so obviously you're given this psychic presentation and you've not put a disclaimer out there and, and things and again you've explained your reasons why but what would you say in that situation i've given you the facts you can make up your own mind i know what i do it's up to you so you you literally just out and out back it's straight back to them to let them fill in the blanks yeah like i don't care what people go away and i think it's wrong for you to argue like if you start getting into an argument at a gig at a wedding like you're not there to blimmin' argue with guests. If they want to see you as a magician, they'll see you as a magician. Okay, that's fine. You don't need to get offended by it. If they want to see me as... Ah, uh, no, he's just reading people psychologically. I don't care. As long as they're happy and entertained, that's all I care about, you know? If someone asks me, is that just a magic trick? Yeah, just back it back to them. And um, I have, however, seen something during lockdown, a way of of dealing with that question i won't say what it is on here because it's it's not my line but i probably i'm i know i've been thinking about it and i want to come up with a variation of of of, of saying it um when i go back but again it it almost does back it back to them and and it's a very honest answer and um another another thing which i want to bring up i was on banachek's podcast uh a few years ago uh banachek's brain and and he was talking about uh various various different things with us and i remember i can't remember if it was on the podcast or off the podcast uh, but he said never set yourself up for your audience to catch you out if that makes sense because if you are very very insistent that you're real like over the top insistent and if you care that they they think you're real 
if they say, oh no, you just done a double lift there, I've seen that, then that, you've lost all credibility. But if you can say, yeah, I mean, I've got, like I say, I've got a hobby in magic. Like sometimes I'll bust out or I can find an ace routine in a, which seems weird doing like a psychic performance, but I have a beautiful line, which means I can do magic as well as keep the credibility for my psychic and it works perfectly. So I'll, I'll do an ace cutting routine and people will be like, this is the best psychic I've ever seen. And he does a major magic tricks. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, you don't have to restrict yourself and say, oh, just because I'm a psychic, I can't do balance by Joshua J or, or I, I can't do a dead cut into the aces. Like you can, you can do what you want. It's art. Do what you want. There's no one can tell you what you can't do. Um, my views on this might change in the future. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just, you, you don't want to, uh, to, to set yourself up like, like Banachek said, and that's why it's important to just say, um, and just not care what people call you, you know, um, not get into arguments with people. I mean, don't get into arguments at gigs anyway, but just, you don't need to be honest with people. I mean, you can, you can be 90% honest with people, but magic, mentalism, psychic stuff, there's an air of mystery and that's what people like. So any magic trick, you're only going to be 90% honest anyway. So just don't set yourself up by failure and don't say things in such a way that people will just catch you out and say, oh no, it's only a magic trick. If people catch you out and say, oh, you've done a double lift there, just be like, yeah, well, you know, it's all about entertainment. I do incorporate magic into what I do. Like, don't, you don't need to shy away from stuff, but, so I think that's, a, that's an important thing to to take away really that's beautiful that's beautiful i really like that approach that that realization that this is entertainment this is an art form this is they're, they're not buying a, a book of tricks from you they're, they're literally buying a performance piece so just not worrying about having to put these disclaimers and things out there it's it's really good to sort of hear your perspective on that um but just to sort of uh, wrap up unless there's any other things that you want to talk about i'm just curious as to what you're sort of working on at the minute what changes are you making to your character uh from this point going forward yeah so what i'm working on it's um again it's uh, based on what you've said last episode through psychological performances there's a lot of things which i can i can take away um from there but it's when i go back to performing in the real world to real people live i'm putting more of an emphasis on the process to read minds how do i get to that point where i reveal a name or i reveal a drawing or someone's memory from their past and 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 it's that process which is the most important part um, i'm looking at incorporating uh, various divination tools to make it a little more interesting um, so i've got a way I think I was thinking about using a pendulum for drawing duplications um, and, and, and other things. So giving, I, I just feel that giving people, opening them up and taking them into your world or giving them like a little red herring, I guess, depending on the routine, it makes it very interesting for them. It feels like you're giving them something like a little secret. And, and I think yes, uh, that's something beautiful to play with. Uh, that's something I'm looking at. Uh, in terms of performance, my performance will stay the same. I'm I'm still gonna go out and perform with a psychic vibe. Um, I I rely heavily on my intuition um, when I perform. So that's that's what I say to my audience. That's that's not gonna change, but it's just gonna be the things I do. Just focusing on the process. It's, for me, it's the most important thing, and I've, I've learned so much during lockdown. And I'm really not happy with any of my material. <laughs> I think it's all getting revamped for when I go back. I know you said you've done a, or, or are in the process of doing a, a deep dive on your character. Um, I, I think mine is needed, but I think I've got to go uh, more into the, the the things that I perform, each performance piece, and, and really do a dive on that. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I think that's a, a, a great piece of advice anyway. I think we should always be learning it's okay not to be making these huge changes to your to your character but again to the point that you're 
you're happy that there are you've got the foundations in place you're just tweaking a little bit and then going into the into the material that's that's really interesting to to hear um is there anything else that you want to talk about in terms of the the, the psychic stuff um in this episode yeah um really it's ethics and if people were believing that you can get inside their mind you really need to be careful with that like you need to be careful with the memories you reveal i've had some awful experiences but looking back on them great memories which will be fascinating to tell down the pub um but it just comes with practice i mean you got if you're doing wedding entertainment you don't want to be talking about death and pain and suffering you got to keep it light-hearted, man. It's a wedding. So just keep it fun and interesting. Use the psychic vibe. Like I, I use it as like a little, like, whoa, that dude is different. Like, he's not a magician, but I thought he was. And that's how I use it, you know, to play off. I mean, I have a deep fascination with it, but I guess my audience only gets a percentage of what I'm fascinated in and because... I say you don't want to be talking about death and all of that at a wedding and 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 most places where magicians perform so you know keep it keep it light hearted there are times when maybe it is okay to go further with someone but you really really have to be careful and, and play it on each person and that that relies <laughs> that relies on your intuition like you will look at someone and you, and you you know as a performer how you you need to take it with them so um yeah just uh don't take it too far with certain people and uh That's just keep brilliant. things happy yeah I, th I think it's something we're going to talk about a little bit more on in depth on the on the next episode um we're looking more towards the the material and and applying your character and, and finding the best material for your character uh, but in the meantime uh, i presume that everybody can still find us in all of the usual places uh, which is Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. But we're not really on Twitter, so go to Instagram or Facebook. Um, we're, dro we're dropping some more content out on YouTube as well, so go and subscribe and follow that. Um, obviously, you're listening to this on your preferred podcast provider, and if you're not, you should be. So uh, make sure to subscribe, do all of that fun stuff, leave ratings and reviews. It takes literally 20 seconds of your time once to be able to give us a nice rating and a, and a nice little review it really helps this podcast grow and helps us reach more people um, and it also helps us sort of stay optimistic over all of this we've got some huge things coming from uh, tsm over the next couple of months i mean by the time that this this episode drops we should have had another a new ebook for that you can join on our mailing list uh, quite simply covid19 this is uh, 19 things that we've managed to achieve during a complete worldwide pandemic. Um, so that might be interesting. You can get that as well as your 10 tips to improve your mentalism ebook, which is 10 actionable immediate strategies that you can take away and learn and, and apply straight away to improve your character, whether it's psychic, psychological or anything. And it's not just character, it's material. It's all sorts, all sorts there. Um, any questions just drop it on the socials but in the meantime i'm going to stop plugging absolutely everything that we're doing you know the drill uh, and we will catch you next week i thought actually was going to say goodbye there he's kept quiet see you next week <laughs>